Retirement isn't happening, according to John Malden over at Malden Economics. A uh, subscriber sent me this article, and I appreciate it to whoever sent that out to me. I like, I, I'm a big fan of John's. I've been reading him for a long time. And I, but I just take a huge issue with this article here. Um, and so let's talk about it because it's a, it's a good article and you should read it. I'll put a link to the show notes. And if you uh, want, you can subscribe to his uh, website. Um, I'm not sure the fees, but, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of John for sure. Uh, March 8th, 2019 is our dateline. All right, so let's, uh, let's talk about this. Uh, TV commercials suggest a financial advisor is key to a leisurely, leisurely retirement. A good one can certainly help, says John, but only to the extent you've saved enough cash to give them something to invest. And man, that's the first area I take issue with. A financial advisor isn't for investing your cash. Vanguard can do that just fine, free, free of charge. A financial advisor should be devising financial plans. That's crazy, right? So I take issue with that, that only if you have cash to give them something to invest is a financial advisor worth it. In fact, it's the exact opposite. Uh, my readers tend to be conscious of things. You probably have above average income and savings. Maybe your own retirement plan is on track, but that doesn't mean you can rest easy. No, no, no. We all exist within a society and an economy. Its problems are ours as well, as we may find out when taxes rise to help pay for others. Today, we'll look at the state of retirement in America, updating some data I shared a couple years ago. So what he's saying is, and even if you are on the golden goose here uh, and just laying golden eggs because you are on the upper echelon of American society, living large as possible, which he thinks most of his readers are, and it's probably true. Uh, the facts are the pitchforks are out. Uh, that's what John's saying. If we don't do something drastically to make their retirement savings better, their retirement's better, the barbarians will soon be at the gates storming your castle. So while you might live in this gated community and just enjoying life's luxuries of America, that doesn't mean you're going to be good to go because if everybody else is... Uh, <laughs> is living on, uh, if everyone else is living on bread, uh, yeah, they're going to come for you. Now, but the funny thing is I can take issue with this whole idea to begin with here in just a second. Social security is not enough. How much you will need to retire and how much you will have? That's the question you got to answer. How much do you need and how much you have? Say you want to stop working at 65 and you're in good health and you expect to work to uh, live until you're 90. Yeah, you'll be living for 25 years of retirement. Will Social Security alone be enough? Well, if you spent most of your life paying as much as legally possible to the system, your monthly benefit at 65 will be 2757. And that's true because you're not 66, which is your full retirement age, and your monthly benefit there at your full retirement age is roughly 2850, 2900, something like that. So you would reduce it for one year, which would bring it down to some amount. I don't know if that's spot on, but pretty doggone close. However, it jumps to 3770 if you wait until you're 70. Now, John says because he's not yet, he's only a few months away from 70, he hasn't started taking it and he hasn't really paid much mind. But he, uh, he was surprised to learn that he's going to get that much money when he starts taking his Social Security on the equivalent of almost $48,000 a year. But yet he's also contributed over 50 years into the system. So it's probably not a great return. And in fact, it is not. But then he says, but most people get less. In fact, the vast majority of people get less. So here's 2,000 right there. This is 2,000 a month or less. And you can see from this over here, the vast majority of Americans get less than 2,000 a month of Social Security. In fact, the average benefit is 1413. Uh, we're going to talk about that. If that's all you have, your retirement lifestyle is not going to include many cruises and golf tournaments. Of course, it shouldn't be all you have. It was designed to keep retired workers out of poverty with Social Security at a time when life expectancies were lower. All right. Now we live longer and have higher expectations and political leaders have done little to dampen our expectations for Social Security. Bottom line, Social Security probably won't give you much security. And that's uh, that, we've heard that many times a Sunday. Ideally, many people should save more, but they do not. Uh, I suppose some just spend their money unwisely and neglect to save anything, but income data suggests that many Americans can't afford to both live a typical middle-class lifestyle and save enough to finance a 20-year retirement. And he uses this Doug Short chart to illustrate and what they say is, in constant dollars, inflation-adjusted dollars, the average earnings for non-managers are now $779 a week. That's at almost a 40-year high. 
All right, millions of those approaching retirement spend their entire lives earning the equivalent of 40,000 a year. A little surprise they don't have six figure retirement savings. Hmm. Many millions, I should say, of those now approaching retirement spent their entire working lives earning the equivalent of 40,000 years. So let's bust out this chart here. This is my little uh, go to guy. So let's just say you spent the work, your entire year working career making $40,000 a year. And on, that's adjusted for inflation, which is what the Social Security bases your base your Social Security amount on. You times that 40000 by 35 because they take your top 35 years of earnings. That gives you what's at $1.4 million. You divide $1.4 by 420 because you take your top 35 years and it's 12 months per year. That's 420 months total. And that gives you your AIME. Your AIME is your average index monthly earnings. That's 3333. All right. So now we take our AIME of 3333. We subtract 926 from it because nine there's three different bend points when it comes to figuring out your average index monthly earnings. 3333 minus 926. So that means we take 3333 and we divide it into two different bend points. The first bend point is 926, which will pay you nine, 90% of, all right? 920.90, that's 833. The next amount is 2407 which will times that by 15%. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second, times 0 0.15, and that'll be 361. All right, so 361, uh, no, it's 32, excuse me, 0 0.3, 2407 times 0 0.32, 2407 times 0 0.32 is 7,700. Okay, so bear with me just a second. So 77 times 8 plus 833, so, hold on just a second, man. 833 plus 770, 1603 is your PIA. All right? 1603 is your PIA because your AIME, your average index monthly earnings, is 3333, 33,000, 3300. You take the first 926, you times that by 0.9%, that gives you $833 of a benefit. You take the next amount up until the third bend point, which you don't reach here, and you times that by 0.32, which in this case is 2407, times by 0.32, which gives you $770. All right, you add those two together, and your total PIA, your primary insurance amount for your Social Security, is 1603. So when you hit full retirement age, 66 or 67, depending on when you're born, you'll get 1603 in benefits. Does that make sense? So we times that by 12, and that gives us 19,000 a year. 1603 gives us 19,236 a year. All right, there's, now bear with me just a second. 19,000, 1603 is PIA equals 19,236 a year. All right, so if you're a single man or single woman, doesn't matter, you get a 19,000 a year in Social Security just having earned the average of 40,000 a year. Now, a couple things going on. We know the median household is making $60,000 a year indexed for inflation. That's the median household. So we're right here, we're well below median, but let's just use it. And let's say you're married. All right, so now we take 19,236, we divide by two, that gives us another 9,618. And we add to 19,236. That gives us $28,810 a year in Social Security. Both filing at full retirement age at 66. We get 28,000. Let's just round up and say 29,000. All right. So now we get 29,000 from Social Security. All right. Okay. From Social Security. We were living on 40,000 the entirety of our lifetimes, all right? So we're living on 40, but we have to subtract minus 7.65% for FICA, minus, we'll just say 5% to your 401k, and we're going to say another 5% in federal, and uh, eh, probably another 10% total taxes, we'll say, to tax it for the federal and state. All right, so in this case, we're living on 40,000 a year. We take out 7.65 for FICA. We take out 5% to your 401k. We take out 10% for federal and state taxes. So 40,000 minus 7.65%. We, we're down to 36.94 minus 10%. Uh, 
We're down at 33.24 minus 5% for 401k. We are down to 31.583. So we are down to third income net is 31.583. We were making, when all is said and done, 31.583. We'll just round it up to 32,000 for social security, uh, for uh, net income after while we're working. Social Security equals 30000 roughly. So we are behind by $2,000 a year, a year from when we were working. Now, we don't have to commute. We don't have as much transportation costs, these various things. Now, people say about your health care. Well, we're paying health care, too, by the way. I hate to say it, but there is a premium when you have health insurance through your employer. And I imagine the premium is probably similar to what your Medicare Part B and Part D will be. You know, I don't know, but I imagine now, let's just say, you say, well, Josh, I, you know, that's that's great and all, but, 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 well, just wait one year. So now we got 30000 a year for Social Security. We want to wait one more year uh, to make sure we have even Stephen, that we have enough Social Security to cover our net income that we had when we were working. And if we wait one year, we get that 4, 8% increase. We'll have, well, about $32,000. 32000 so in that case, we're netting, we're living off a of net 31535. We'll just round it up to 32. In this case, because we took it at one year with delayed uh, credits, we'll get about 32,000 a year in Social Security. So for the millions of those now approaching retirement with little or no nest egg, can Social Security be enough? Uh, unequivocally, it can. Now, let's just say, say you're single. All right, so before we're single, we'll just say this 40,000 is for a single person. And again, the net in that regard is 32000 is the net income that they're living on. All right, now we know at full retirement age, their Social Security benefit was $19,000, a little bit more than that, but we'll just say 19000 All right, so now we have a deficit of uh, $13,000. So now we say, well, let's just wait a few years, and we'll times that by 1.32. Uh, now we got 25000 with delayed earnings credits. So now we have 32,000 was our net income while we we're working. Our, our full retirement age PIA, primary insurance amount, the amount you get at your full retirement age was uh, 19,000 or so. And now we have a net, if we wait for delayed earnings credits, of uh, 32% on top of that PIA, which is 25,000 bucks. Yeah, I mean, you're still short a little bit, but I, I mean, the, the idea this is what's going to cause a pitchfork at the gate, I just don't get it. Because if we're looking at the, the, the and again, this is just non-managers. I mean, this is just working folks. That's all there is to it. Who have averaged 40,000 over their career. I mean, it just, I don't get the, I just don't, I literally don't get the, uh, the lack of understanding of social security, how it plays to the average people's income. If you're used to living on $40,000 gross, you can live on $32,000 with social security and not even blink an eye. You have no taxes on that money. On top of that, your premiums, your Medicare Part B and Part D, well, you've already been paying your premiums to the health insurance. Even better is that your cost of clothing, clothing will probably go down. Your transportation costs will probably go down. And we know that, uh, just empirically that most people spend less in retirement. So I don't get it. All right, let's keep going now. In a country of 33 million people, shockingly few have enough retirement savings to support the stereotypical leisurely golden years. But, I mean, again, we're not – I just – I don't get why we're <laughs> – I don't get it. I just look at it. we're using millions of people who are accustomed to living off forty thousand dollars a year, and millions of people unfortunately are taking Social Security too soon uh, because that's they're having this fear that they better get it while the getting's good because Social Security's be gone. And then we say, look, these people don't have any savings, and he uses the average four hundred one k talk. You know, the, and let's just go into this right here. So this is the average uh, median savings levels. By all counts, and we can see not much. I mean, you can see these. And I'll let you look at the charts, but this is what I thought was. Uh, let's see here. Median households of all accounts. If you had, if you're in the top one, two, three, four, five, and this is for your quintile, uh, the top quintile, uh, you had 1.125 million saved. If you're in the uh, the middle quintile, you had 77,000. In the two lower quintiles, you had nothing saved. The median. Uh, savings, that's all households. Now, if you had some saved, 
Uh, and again, you can't discount the people who don't have any savings. But if you did, if you were a household with savings, if you were, if you had any savings whatsoever, and you're in the median quintile, you had eighty-two thousand dollars on medians. Or I guess that's average save. If we use a median, it's fifty-four thousand bucks. I mean, so if you had any savings whatsoever, and you're in the middle quintile, you had average, you had a median of fifty-four thousand dollars. That means fifty percent had more, fifty percent had less, which is great. I'm just going back to the, uh, so if you have $54,000 and you're, it was actually $55,000, you're going to take 5% a year off that. That's 2,700 bucks a year. And just going back to this right here, you're right back to where you, I just, I mean, I don't get it. Now, now the median for all households is only 34,000. All right. So that means 50% of the people had more than 34,000, 50% of the people have less. I, okay, that stinks. I wish they had more, but it's not like they're living a leisurely lifestyle to begin with. But presumably, presumably, if they're average, if they're used to living on forty thousand a year, they're not used to living on forty thousand a year. They're used to living on thirty-two thousand a year, and so now they have you know twenty to thirty thousand of social security, and they had a median savings of thirty-four thousand bucks, and even that thirty-four thousand dollars times five percent. There's still another two thousand dollars a year they can live on. I mean, they're not going to live large, but they were never living large anyway. It's not like you're for forty years of working, you're not living large. All of a sudden, you want to live large in retirement. It doesn't work like that. I just, I don't, I just don't get it. I, I literally don't understand. All right, the point is, eighty percent of households have less than a hundred thousand in savings. That's not enough for even a minimal retirement. It just, it is. If you're used to living on forty thousand, don't forget the median household's income is sixty thousand dollars a year. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, so if we're going to look at the median savings for households, all or just even ones with savings, and let's look at the median household income. You can't look at average retirement Social Security balance and look at and then say we're all these people are living on forty thousand, and then say we're going to look at the median household savings. Well, you got to look at the median household income. The median household income is $60,000. You times that by uh, 35 because it's 35 years of work experience that goes into your AIME, your average index monthly earnings. Divide that by 420. In this case, you got $5,000 is your AIME, your average index monthly earnings. So let's take a look at how much that will pay us for our Social Security benefit. All right, so if your median household income is $60,000, that's $5,000 a month, all right? So we take our AIME of $5,000 a month. We take the first 926 times 0.9. We take the remaining in this case, because we're still not hitting the third bend point, And we times that by 0.32. Our PIA in this case is $2,136. That's the amount we get at the day we retire our full retirement age. Times that by 12. And we get 25,640 a year in tax-free social security income, assuming there's no other sources of income whatsoever. All right, now we divide that, we times that by 1.5, and we have 38,000 a year if you're married. All right, but that's just taking out your full retirement age. It's not even taking it as delayed credits. It's assuming that your spouse had, didn't have her, his or her own benefit. That, and that's 40,000 a year of Social Security with not even blinking an eye. Now, $60,000, all right, minus 7.65 FICA. Minus was again five percent four one k contributions. And now once you get to sixty thousand, we're going to say your tax is about twelve and a half percent, state and federal. All right. So now that's your tax. That's how much you you're grossing sixty thousand dollars. You're losing seven point six five to FICA. You're losing five percent to your four one k contributions, and you're losing twelve and a half percent to state and fed. Sixty thousand dollars minus seven point six five percent minus five percent minus twelve point five percent. We're netting 46.05. Oops, I didn't write it down. We're netting 46.059 after tax net income. Social Security is giving us roughly 40,000 uh, right there. So we're 6,000 shy of our after tax income when we're working. Are there other reductions that can be made because we're not paying for clothing, because we're not paying for transportation, blah, blah, blah? The answer is probably yes, without question. And if you delay taking Social Security for one year, that uh, uh, 20, what did I say, 24,000 times 1.08 would give you 26,000 plus, your, I mean, you're basically, if you just take it for one year, you're basically breaking even. That's without taking any distributions from your 401k, if you have one. Again, we can see that many people do because the median of all households 
of all households is $34,000 in that middle quintile, right? With all households with any savings, the median is $55,000. That's the median. That means half the people have more, half the people have less, but still we're talking median to median. Anyway, so lots of good stuff in this article. I just, uh, I, I just, I take a huge umbrage with some of this stuff. I don't get it. He talks about bear markets. He said, note the S&P 500 is up well over 3.5% in the last 10 years, which is this what this shows us, yeah. Uh, but the 401k and IRAs did not even double. Well, I mean, I just, okay, hey, I, I and he says most of that, you know, just bad investing. And I, I completely disagree with that, but okay, whatever. Um, and then he thinks, but he talks about the recession, what that, what that, that did, uh, Large and this is where we talk about. You know, last thing I'll, I'm getting too long here, but further, when that next recession and bear market hit, it will take even longer to bounce back. The recovery will be even slower than this last one, as re research I've shared in previous letters show. The large amounts of debt slows recoveries. Very large amounts creates flat economies. We are approaching large amounts in the U.S. Man, we're already at large amounts. We've been at large amounts since Reagan. I mean, come on, man. What, why are we just saying the large amounts are coming? They're here, man. They've been here for a long time. And since Reagan, we've had three recessions of any significance, and they're not even that bad. Yeah, the one in 2007 and nine was horrible. Don't get me wrong. But it was, But that was literally why we call it the Great Recession, because it's the, the younger brother to the Great Depression. And we came out on that. Look, a lot of people got hurt without question. But we came out of it. We did. We're still here. The economy is back on par for what it was previous to that. Actually, the economy has grown significantly since then. I mean, the economy is now at $20 trillion. What was it right before the Great Recession? I don't know, but it's grown since the Great Recession to a higher economy than it was even before the Great Recession. So we have large amounts of debt. But I do think that does lead, and I'll end with this. Large amounts of debt do cause economies to collapse. Now, economies, I want to talk about your own personal economy. Large amounts of debt will hurt you drastically when your own personal recession happens, be it a job layoff, be it injury at work, just be it a divorce. Large amounts of debt will, will just sink you, regardless of what's happening out there. If you acquire large amounts of debt and something happens to cause your own personal recession, there's, no, there's really going to be hard getting out from under that. So rule number one, do not acquire large amounts of debt. Avoid it like the plague. That way you can avoid the recession swamping you. All right, that's all I want to talk about. There's a lot more I would, but man, I'm 22 minutes into this, and it's just uh, it's it's uh, it's problematic. But if you have any kind of questions, thoughts, concerns, uh, put them in the show notes. Don't forget to subscribe, smash, and uh, and I'll put the link so you can read this article yourself. We'll see you next time.